How's it going guys and welcome to today's video. As you can see in front of me, I have ABS warning lights on, traction control and brake warning lights on. Um, this is a follow up from a previous job I've done. So this was in, if you wanna look back at my earlier video, which I will link in the description, uh, car came in and it had issues with the right hand rear wheel speed sensor and not picking up signal correctly. After the, after the work that was done on that, gone away for quite a considerable amount of time and now it is back on again. Brought it for a road test, live data showed up that the signal was uh, intermittent on the right hand rear again. So what has happened with that is the reluctor ring is out of shape. Um, I thought it'd be good enough to get away with it, but it's not and I need to put in a new reluctor ring to sort this issue out. So what you'll see in today's video will be re me removing the drive shaft, taking off the old reluctor ring. I'll show you the unevenness that's in it. I believe it's corrosion that has uh, gone underneath the ring to put it out of shape. So I will show you how to remove that and also how to fit the new one. I'll stick it all back together again, bring it for a road test, and I imagine that will be the end of any issues with the ABS in this particular car. I'm also going to be doing a major service on that on this car, so the oil, air and fuel filter. Uh, this is an E90 2005 to 2011 model, I believe. And uh, if you're interested in how to do a service on it, be sure to check back in for that video as well, which I will be posting at a later date. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead, put this up in the air, take off the right hand rear wheel and start to make room to get out that drive shaft. I now have the wheel removed and as you can see it's not looking too nice in on the drive shaft nut. It is heavily corroded around there so I'm hoping that comes off without too much bother. Um, that is a 12 point socket you'll need for that nut. And then if you come in here to the inner part of the drive shaft you can see that we have these e-torques. They go all the way around. I believe there's six of them and they are e-12s. To crack them away, you can get someone to press the brake inside while you while you turn them, or you can actually just lever against one another. So you can use a pry bar to cross and hold it, and then um, crack them away. Either or is fine. Or if you have a an impact um, cordless that you can use, that will also break them away. I'll be just using my spanner and locking against them to remove it. So that is basically it. First thing I'm gonna do is make sure that that nut comes off, because if it doesn't, I'm gonna be in a bit of bother, and then I'll come in here and start loosening all these. So it came out a bit easier than I was expecting, but I was using a three quarter inch drive um, air air gun to get that off. You are you are gonna need quite a considerable amount of force to break away them drive shafts, especially if they're heavily corroded and haven't been removed before. So that's that stage. Next thing I'm gonna do is put it up in the air more and start to loosen all them e-torques e on the inner part of the shaft. You'll also want to disconnect the wheel speed sensor so just there and there you can see the hex head that needs to be removed and you want to pull that out of position as well so this is how I remove it what I do is I just use a pry bar to lock one against another and that gives me so I'll hold that with my right hand and then I'll just crack these with my left and I will be going around each one of those to remove them um, it's very easy and very straightforward to do and you don't have to have somebody else around to uh, to press on the brake or so on but like I said earlier it's whatever is easiest or handy for you um, to break them away so as you can see there I have them backed away they come out in blocks of two with that bracket like that and just go around and remove them all 
and then okay this so the shaft is now out here. you don't need to remove any more in case you're wondering to get that shaft out there is enough room if you um, you can put a pry bar or a screwdriver in there and just keep a little bit of pressure in between the diff and the end of the shaft and then pull it out in this direction here that's how i found it to be the easiest so the next thing i will be doing is knocking that shaft through and hopefully it's not going to be jammed in the hub and that it'll come out easy uh, what i recommend using on that would be a punch uh, a good size punch that fits most of it there you can thread on the nut back on again so you don't want to flare this uh, you want a punch that's uh, big enough that it can cover most of it but not damage the outer ends of the shaft where it flares up and you won't be able to get the nut back on again so this is my setup here i put the nut uh, back on now it has moved so make sure you don't put the nut on too far in a way that there's no room for movement when it does start to go but i used a punch in like that plus <coughs> i put uh, plenty of lubrication in around the shaft before I put the nut back on and then I just used a punch and a dead blow hammer and that has started to move now. I now have the shaft out and in case you're wondering what happens to this you can if you look closely you can see the corrosion underneath the actual reluctor ring so that corrosion lifts the reluctor ring out of its uh, perfect round and then one area or another starts to enlarge and if we look straight down here just see inside the ring there how the corrosion is bad that has lifted and let me just show you the part exactly see that see that area now the marks ignore the marks i i tried to tap it back i took the sensor out and uh, used a punch just to see if i could get it moved back while i was waiting for the reluctor ring to come because i ordered that online and uh, don't waste your time i would say if it was you just wait till you get it because i spent about a half an hour trying to trying to get that to maybe push back a bit so the abs to be working but it didn't work anyways this is the area here that's the main problem and that's basically it I have my new ring here take that out uh, but first I'm gonna stick this over in the vise and I'm gonna press off that ring or if you need to you cut off that ring either or as long as you don't damage underneath it we'll clean the surface we'll make sure it's nice and then we will go about fitting this new ring onto it so uh, i've tried for a couple of minutes to to get that to lift off the seat with uh, using pry bars and screwdrivers and holding it in position but it's just not budging so i'm not going to waste any more time with that route i'm going to use a tool here i have in the workshop called an air hacksaw uh, which will make this a lot easier i'm just going to put a sideways cut uh, and i'm going to make sure that i don't go too far where i damage underneath it i just cut it enough and then that'll break straight through and i'll be able to pop it off You can see where I cut and you can see all that mess underneath it so it's really really stuck on there 
and this section I cut this in particular because this was the problem this is where it was lifting so you can see that now I'll try and steady this off because this is under it you can see that extra layer of crud that's underneath that ring which was pushing it out much too far in that particular area all right now it's time to get cleaning um what i'm going to do is i'm just going to scrape off all the loose bits and then i'm going to use some um different grades of sandpaper to tidy it up just an update of how the cleaning is progressing and uh i suppose i get a little bit concerned that this corrosion may be worse than even first thought of if you can just see in there I am unsure if this part on the inside is too far gone in but I need to clean it back either way so I don't have much choice because uh, the rest of it is all uneven what I'm using for this is a wire brush on a electric drill I'm also using a scraper and some 40 grit sandpaper to smoothen it out uh, this is the actual ring and I'm I keep popping that on and checking to see how much is left before it starts to get too small so you can see there there's still a good bit of room before it needs to be pressed on So that's basically where I'm at. Uh, this is obviously the cheap way of fixing this by just getting the ring. Uh, I, I'm not sure at this particular time if this is going to be successful. I may end up having to get this uh, this part of the shaft, the CV joint side. But let's hope that this works um, and we'll keep trying. I'll, I'll clean it all up and see. I'm just a little bit concerned at this stage that that might clean up too much and this then would either need to be tried to be bonded on or just be too loose to where it can be pressed on it also has to be perfectly even all the way around or you end up having the same problem again where one part of the actual ring is sticking out further than the other okay here is a update for you i have cleaned it all off i've used many different tools i've used 40 grade sandpaper 80 grade sandpaper i've even used a file in certain areas very cautiously I used my gasket cleaner here and like I was saying I used a wire brush on the drill which is just over there as well. Now am I certain this is going to work? Absolutely not. Uh, I've taken a considerable amount of time cleaning it up. This is pitted without a shadow of a doubt that is not the normal surface. Some of, some of it at the back here grooves in and then some of it steps out i have tried to keep it as round as i possibly can and now this ring is just starting to slip on it is a fine line between uh, cleaning it so much that this is loose and having it in a way that this is tight enough so this reluctor ring doesn't be slipping it needs to press on or um, tap on where it's nice and secure now as i tap this on this could actually become out of shape and this job might not be successful and I just might have wasted a lot of time but I would prefer to try and fail than not try at all uh, so I'm hoping fingers crossed that this will press on nicely and this job will be a success and uh, I have spent all the time cleaning it as much as I can if this ring starts to get really tight and it's not pushing down for you I would suggest trying to pry it back up and do a bit more cleaning that's what I will be doing. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get um, probably a pipe from the Baron Press. Hopefully something that will fit around that nicely and try to tap it on. So this is my custom setup. I'm going to be using two old bearings. Sit down on top of that. And then I'm just going to be tapping it from the top down. Thank you. 
just change position a bit. The back here is sitting up a bit further than I'd like. So I'm just going to focus on that area. so I have it sitting there are areas that you can certainly see just try and elevate this here Do you see right down there you can just see see where the light breaks that is the part that isn't perfectly round so when you can see the light changing like that you know there's a gap over this side is nice and tight all the way around so there is an imperfection in it. it, it has it from maybe halfway around, but it, it's nice and tight, it's nice and secure, and um, it's sitting down nicely. So let's see, um, fingers crossed that this works out, if not, uh, I do know how to solve the problem. It'll be a case of uh, getting either a complete shaft, but I would imagine this unit here, which is the outer CV joint, will will come um, separately. I would buy that and fit it in with the ring already uh, on it from factory. So we'll see. Um, we'll see how it pans out. Everything is fitted back together now, including have the notch knocked in on the outer part of the drive shaft nut. Just one tip, if your uh, sensor, if you get a new sensor and you're not putting on the ring, what um, you can do is loosen this, spin it, make sure that uh, it's not catching. If it does catch on the actual ring itself, on the reluctor ring, this sensor will pop out. So you want to make sure that it spins freely and that it doesn't lock at any stage. So if you back this nut off after having the new sensor in, you'll be able to see uh, it pulsing out if there is an enlargement where it's catching to that degree. So if, it, if, it's, if it's a bad one, you will, you will see the movement in that sensor there. So that's it. I'm going to put on the wheel and then I'm going to bring it for a test drive and see if all the lights are now going to reset and go off. I have it back together now, I'm just about to start it, fingers crossed that uh, we get the result we want, still have to do the service. So the ABS light is on, but when I bring that for a spin now, that should right itself, if everything, if everything has worked out okay with it. So I'm, what I'm now going to do is bring it out the road and uh, hopefully them lights will go off by themselves. If not, unfortunately, it has not been a success and I'll have to do the job again, but I know what's involved. But like I was saying earlier, uh, it's better to try and fail than uh, not to try at all. So hopefully this does work out. If it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. I'll just get what's needed another time and put it all back together. Um, it seems to be a success uh, and everything seems to be running good again. I will uh, keep a close eye on it over the next coming uh, days and make sure that everything is functioning okay like i said worst case scenario i have to put in a cv joint with the ring on it uh, itself but uh, if this has, if this has happened to you and yours isn't as bad as mine you certainly will get away with just replacing the ring uh, i doubt there will be a lot of them out there that are as bad as what i came across um, and where the actual pitting starts to pull off as you take the ring off but uh, well that's it guys, I hope you found this video useful, I hope you found it informative, uh, if you are doing this job let me know how you got on, um, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.